So today we are going to study uh, a bit more about uh, vector calculus, uh, a bit introduction. So as we studied previously that we have, for example, a vector in, in a coordinate system where we have x, this is x and this is y and this one is z-axis. Then if, for example, we have, uh, let me draw a cube so that it is, it is apparently easy for you to understand. If this is a cube and I will take another color in order to mark um, let me take a blue color so let this be a vector that is for example R and this is the point which where it is touching so it is starting from an origin and it is starting touching this point, for example. So this R can be resolved in, in, <coughs> um, I would say, p axis of this particular, uh, in this particular coordinate system, obviously. So then this is the x component of it, and this one is the y component of it till this point, and then this is the z component of it in for this particular R. It means that R can be expressed as x plus y plus z. So, I mean, uh, we can actually resolve it in, in three axes. This was one concept we, we just studied and now um, going a bit further and, and talking about the unit vectors and if this is x and then this is y and this one is z, then this uh, a unit vector with the magnitude of, uh, of um, one obviously is actually a unit vector which is in x direction it is ax and uh, a vector that is directed in y axis and it has a magnitude of one is actually ay and then the same is with z axis so it is az. Now this was actually a bit introduction about uh, unit vectors and as we discussed before that for example we have a unit vector AR for this particular vector so this this uh, unit vector is, is going to be in direction like this and it has a magnitude of a magnitude of one always and if we want to calculate what this unit vector is so for that we need to go for R and divided by the magnitude of R so this gives us the the equation for this particular unit vector. Now I would like to go through uh, to other um, few other concepts uh, regarding this particular vector calculus uh, introduction. So let us go a bit further. Um, now if for example we have uh, same, uh, let me go for the same coordinate system and let me draw the axis let me say this is x and this is y because we are discussing rectangular coordinate systems um, so we have three parameters x y and z we discussed this before that x is is from minus infinity to infinity and then y is from minus infinity to infinity likewise z is from minus infinity to infinity so these are the the three variables and these are the ranges of uh, the parameters we have in this particular rectangular coordinate system. Now, if we have um, a vector that is um, at a point P1, 2 and 3 for example, and then we have a vector that is on uh, a point Q which is 2, minus 2 and 1 for example. Now, let me draw a few uh, uh, dashes so they represent a unit for example a block and let this be 1 and this be 1 and this be 1 so this is 2 and this is so this is 1 and this is 2 and so on in each direction so now it means that we have uh, uh, if we have these two points P and Q right and we have some position vectors uh, starting from origin the position vector is a vector which starts from origin and it goes to till certain point for example uh, let this point be w 
and this W is, is represented by W x, uh, x, y and z and it starts from the origin which means that the starting point is 0, 0 and 0 for x, y and z value, right? So now um, uh, uh, let us uh, for example go for a case where we have a position vector which ends which starts with the origin point and which ends at 2 minus 2 and 1 now for that purpose I need to go because I have minus 2 in y so I need to have minus y as well and let this be first and second I mean the unit 1 and unit 2 so now I would say then then we have somewhere here the the point Q in fact the point Q in fact is somewhere here where you travel where you travel uh, 2 in x axis and you travel 2 in x axis when you drop this point is going to be at 2 okay and you travel at minus 2 and you travel at 1 in z axis so this gives us a, a unit a, a vector a position vector that is at point q in fact q so the arrow is like this obviously because it starts with the origin and it ends with um, at this point 2 minus 2 and 1 we have another vector so we call this as R R Q. Okay. Now we have another point P, <coughs> where P is one, two, and three. It means that so we have to go further at three level, and we have to go till two level, and likewise in in Y we have to go for for only one. Sorry, for X we have to go for one. For Y we have to go for three, and for Z the value is. Uh, for y it is 2 and for z it is 3 so uh, it means that we are somewhere here this is point 1 2 and 3 okay and the position vector goes like this and we can call this as rp now now calling this as rp Uh, just a second now yes now this is RP and if I want to find out RPQ now if I want to find out RPQ what this RPQ is actually it is the vector sum of the desired vector from uh, point P to point Q it means that we have point P and we have a point Q so the desired vector we want to find out from from P to Q is this RPQ in fact and how would I calculate it it can be done with RQ minus RP if I want to find RPQ then this RPQ is actually starting from this point and going till Q point and this is what RPQ is where if you look at the the orientation of the arrows it it clearly show us that it is rq minus rp in fact okay so this is how we can easily calculate so let us do uh, the calculation about it um, with the same with the same uh, so let us first um, represent RQ and represent RP so RP is actually what AX since we have 1 2 and 3 for for, for point P and we have let me rewrite it for 2 minus 2 1 So it means that uh, RQ would be um, RQ would be 2 AX minus 2 AY plus 
is that and now the rp is actually ax plus because we have a unit uh, uh, magnitude over here for this uh, component vector and then we have 2 ay and then we have 3 az so in order to find out r p q from t till q is actually r q minus r p in fact which means that 2 minus 1 into ax plus minus 2 minus 2 into a y and and then plus 1 minus 3 1 because we have we have 1 over here 1 minus 3 into a z so this gives us the resultant r p q is actually equal to a x minus 4 a y minus 2 a z so this is our resultant this is our resultant vector in fact so we we actually applied the same rule of vector addition and this rule shows that the vector form from the origin to p plus the vector from p to q is equal to the vector uh, from the origin to q what do i mean by this is that if i say that uh, let me uh, write it in uh, here mathematically that um, So what I mean to say is actually that uh, we have, if for example, this is the origin and then we have RP over here and then we had RPQ, sorry, we had a capital RPQ and then we had actually RQ. So if you add RP with RPQ, this gives you RQ, which is actually the resultant. It means that R from R, uh, starting uh, from P till Q point, it can be uh, obtained by adding RP, where RP is what is a is a vector starting from origin till a point T, and added with RPQ, added with this RPQ, actually gives you the resultant RQ. In fact. So, in other words, it means that, in other words, in other words, it means that, um, let me take another color. So, in other words, in other words, it means that, that we can straight forwardly write R P Q is actually equal to from this equation obviously R P Q is actually equal to R Q minus R P so we have to consider this equation throughout our our course and whenever we want to find out from one point till another point so for example from P, going from P till Q is actually this a position vector minus this position vector in fact so this is one position vector and this is another position vector and this gives us the, the resultant of both of them so the vector difference of r q minus r p is actually equal to uh, the vector r p q i hope this is understood